Welcome to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. Hi, Stephen from Own or Disown. Well, last week I tested a desktop with an RTX 4070 and an i7-12700K CPU. Now, if you haven't seen that video, click here. Um, now, I've also done a video where I compared the mobile RTX 4070 in the Legion 7i Pro and the RTX 4080 in the CyberPower PC Tracer 7. So I was interested to see how these mobile GPUs compared to the desktop 4070. Now, the desktop 4070 and the laptop 4080 are both based on the AD104 chip and have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 video memory, whilst a laptop 4070 is based on the AD106 chip and only has eight gigabytes. And then some games at the common QHD resolution used by higher end gaming laptops, eight gigabytes isn't enough and forces you to either lower the resolution or lower the quality settings. Now the laptop 4070 is basically a laptop 3070 Ti with the ability to do Nvidia frame generation. And given that AMD now has developed its own software-based FSR3 frame generation that could be used on previous generations of NVIDIA GPUs, it makes the laptop 4070 even less enticing. Now, the other takeaway is that the laptop 4080 actually has 26% more shader cores, but due to its lower graphics power of max 175 watts compared to an average of 192 watts that I saw on the desktop 4070, its clock speed can be as much as 25% lower. So we can expect performance to be similar on average. But now we all know that Nvidia can push 200 watts to a mobile GPU if they wanted to. The 2080 Super could do it, and even my GTX 1080 laptop goes up to 195 watts. So why nerf the mobile GPU is anyone's guess. In reality, Nvidia should have made the laptop 4080 with the exact same power and memory speed as the desktop 4070 and that, in turn, should have the same shared account as the laptop 4080. Okay, with that rant out of the way, let's look at the results. I got over 11 games, tested at 2560 by 1600. In Battlefield 5, the laptop 4080 was 7% faster than the desktop 4070, which in turn was 65% faster than the laptop 4070. One thing you'll see time and time again is that the desktop 4070 does generally have a higher 1% low or minimum frame rate. Now over to Battlefield 2042, the result is much the same, although here the 1% low for the laptop 4080 and the desktop 4070 is about the same. In Cyberpunk 2077, I used the inbuilt benchmark and ray tracing set to ultra and DLSS set to balanced. Here, the results were much closer with the laptop 4080 and the desktop pretty much the same, apart from the 23% higher minimum frame rate for the desktop card. DLSS will make the game more CPU dependent, so perhaps that explains the closer results. I used the start of the game in Dead Space Remake, using auto settings and using no DLSS. And this game is actually quite taxing on the GPU, so the laptop 4070 is again further back in the pack, and the laptop 4080 and the desktop 4070 having the same average frame rate. But again, we see a large 33% difference in 1% lows. Far Cry 6, even at this resolution and ultra settings, is quite CPU dependent, so the delta between the cards is smaller. We have 11% in favour of the laptop 4080, as the desktop card boost clock is not at its maximum, and the difference in shared account plays more of a part. Hogwarts Legacy is infamous for its stuttering on laptops, even with the 4080, and this is reflected in the very low 1% lows that we see. The desktop 4070 holds the advantage in average frame rate and is definitely more fluid in gameplay. The laptop 4070 performs just like the 4080 version, which suggests to me there's a bit of a CPU bottleneck going on here, and perhaps that's the reason why the desktop does so well. The i7 12700K does cope better than the mobile 3980HX in this title. Now I used the inbuilt benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and the desktop 4070 saw a 15% boost over the laptop 4080 and a whopping 75% boost over the laptop 4070. And in Starfield, the desktop 4070 was 90% faster than its mobile counterpart, which is criminal really. The mobile 4080 is much closer and should be the true mobile 4070. The mobile 4070 with its 8GB of VRAM hits its limit at ultra settings in The Last of Us Part 1. In fact, it uses just about 9GB uh, of memory, and as a result, it is quite choppy to say the least. The laptop 4080 has an 8% advantage in average frame rate over the desktop 4070, but again we see it fall behind in, in the 1% lows. 
Now, another game where the Mobile 4070 runs out of video memory is Watch Dogs Legion, and is 96% behind the full-fat desktop 4070, once the laptop 4080 commands a 10% gain over the desktop card. And finally, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The desktop 4070 and mobile 4080 are pretty much the same, with the mobile 4070 some 44% behind. So let's take a look at the averages. Out of 11 games, I would say considering the average frame rate that the laptop 4080 beats desktop 4070 in 5 games, it tied in 2, and the desktop card won the remaining 4 games. So it was actually really quite close, as one would expect given the specifications of the two cards. The highest shader count on the mobile chip is countered by the higher boost clock of the desktop card by nature of its higher power. The mobile 4070 shouldn't be called a 4070 at all, and it's nothing remotely like the desktop card, which is 39% faster. Out of the 9 games I measured, the 1% lows or minimum frame rate, the desktop 4070 runs 6 of them, resulting in a 12% average improvement over the mobile 4080. Now forget about the mobile 4070, as its small 8GB of VRAM really did hold it back. One would think, you know, we should see a 39% difference like we get with the average frame rate, but no, the difference is 64%, and this is the true reflection on how playable that card is at these settings. In this day and age, I think any laptop that costs $1,500 or more should have at least 12GB of VRAM. Now don't get me wrong, the Mobile 4070, like the 3070 Ti before it, is a capable video card, especially at 1080p. I just think it is named wrong. Perhaps it should be called Tops the 4060 Ti M or, or something like that because it uses the AD106 chip versus the AD107 on the desktop 4060. Conversely, the Mobile RTX 4080 should be called RTX 4070 M and the Mobile RTX 4090 called RTX 4080M, as it uses the AD103 chip, just like the desktop 4080. Now, as for those 1% lows, the desktop does have an advantage, possibly as a result of thermal throttling on laptops. Now, this is a shame, as there is no denying that gaming laptops are getting insanely powerful, given their form factor. I just ask NVIDIA to allow manufacturers to be able to push more power to the GPU if the cooling system can handle it. Now, let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you for watching. Bye now.